Okay, what's up guys? It's R3R Turbo here from the internet. Um, what we're looking at here is a Rocket 3 transmission. It's from a 2006 engine, so it's got, as far as I know, two out of three updates. Um, but it's missing a third update. Um, so, we've got the output shaft, input shaft. Now, just the way the gears work. On the input shaft, we've got one, two, three, four, five input gears. And the output shaft, we've got one, two, three, four, five output gears. And that's the order they're in. So as you can see, on the input shaft, first gear is the smallest gear, the least amount of teeth. Then you have second, third, fourth, and fifth with the most teeth. And then it's the opposite on the output shaft. First has the most teeth, second has the second most, then third, fourth, and fifth has the least teeth. So uh, the input shaft turns like this. Um, first gear is stuck to the input shaft, it's fixed. Um, fifth gear is also, sorry, no, fifth gear is what I'd call semi floating. It seems to turn the shaft, but if you hold the shaft hard, it will, it will turn. And the reason why it's tight is because we've got a pair of opposed facing Belleville washers in here, which keep kind of a spring effect on it. If you take those out, this guy will spin freely. Um, this is third and fourth, um, which acts as kind of a, these are what you call dogs, these guys. And on, if the cog was big enough, like we'll see in the output shaft, the dogs can go into what's called a window on the gear which is basically a hole all the way through, we'll see in a moment. Um, on smaller gears though, dogs engage with dogs To Basically what's happening here is, when the input shaft turns, this guy, fifth, can stay still, like so. But if you want to connect fifth gear to the input shaft, you send in this guy, the selector fork, moves him across, and he will engage like that, and then fourth and fifth are meshed, and you just use the fourth gear dogs via the fifth gear dogs to lock the fifth gear onto the input shaft. Um, then second gear down here is also locked to the shaft. That won't move, it's blind. So, we move on to the output shaft. Um, if I heal this up here, I know my selector guys are moving, but first gear will spin freely. Second gear, if I take away the dog, will also spin freely. Actually, I just realized I'm out shot there. There's first gear. There's second gear. There's third gear. And then fourth gear spins freely, but fifth gear does not go anywhere. So, let's just walk through the gears. Um, when I'm in neutral, all these guys are sitting approximately there. And this guy is turning, and because this guy uh, is semi-floating, it turns. That should be more like, I'll just line them up for accuracy. This guy is turning the output shaft via the fifth gear output. But if you were to clamp this guy with something like a back wheel touching the ground, um, the input shaft will just turn inside in the fifth gear input, and that's neutral. So, we'll get back to that in a minute when we're engaging fifth, but what I want to do here is engage first. Now, to engage first, first gear here on the input is constantly turning with the input shaft. But when I want to uh, turn the first gear output, which is this guy, I need to somehow lock him to the output shaft, and that's done by moving this in here. And as you can see, the dogs, these guys on fifth, uh, you can kind of see it there, the windows on first gear output, they mesh together. And now we have first gear, keep him there, is locked to the output shaft. So that's first gear engaged, and now the power is transmitted by coming in here. First gear input connects to first gear output, the power goes through fifth gear and into the output shaft and out. So that's how it works in first gear. You want to move into second gear. This is disengaged, and the second, third dog ring here engages with second gear. And now second gear on the input is locked to the shaft, so now the power is transmitted into second gear input, to second gear output, through 
the uh, second third dog ring and into the output shaft and out so the power comes in up back a small bit and out again well it doesn't go back it's it does technically go back and then out so then you want to select third gear it's pretty much the same thing again this fella slides past the neutral position and into mesh with third gear so now third gear is locked to the output shaft um, I've fallen out of line here again but now what happens is third gear input here is locked splined to the input shaft so the input shaft the power is transmitted along the input shaft up through third input into third output which goes through the second third selector dog ring and out so that's the way the power flows in third gear just the same, exactly the same as second except for uh, the power does come back a small bit and then out it basically goes straight out so then you want to go to fourth gear you uh, free up second and third to free turn and you engage fourth gear so now fourth gear is locked to the output shaft via the fifth gear uh, dog ring so now what we have is the power comes in along the input shaft into the fourth gear input up into the fourth gear output and then through the fifth gear dog ring into the output shaft and out so it kind of comes up much like second gear it goes back a little bit and then out so then you want to engage fifth gear you're back into the neutral position here you're neither engaged nor here nor here but what happens here is you're using third and fourth uh, we better turn this a little bit it's, it's okay when the engine's running it, it in, intermesh is okay but the selector fork will move this guy in there like that so now you're what you're you what you're doing is you're connecting the fifth gear you're locking it to the input shaft via the fourth gear uh, dogs basically so now uh, power comes in through the input shaft it comes up through fourth gear and into fifth input and then into fifth output and then fifth output is connected to the output shaft via its uh, ring gear here and out so power comes in back up down and out now sixth gear which doesn't exist yet but we do have space for it here and a little bit of space here uh, haven't completely bottomed out on the design yet but roughly how it's going to work is pretty much the exact same as fifth say in my Hayabusa gearbox the sixth gear is here between third and second and same here and it's basically we need to get this remade with dogs around here so that we can engage sixth gear sixth gear will be floating just like fifth it'll float and we will engage it by moving this guy over there like that and we will lock sixth gear to the input shaft via the third gear dogs so then the input shaft will be turning power will come along the input shaft up to third gear into the sixth gear input and that's the easy bit the more difficult bit is the space here see the way this dog ring here is dogs either side of it and just a fork space in between whereas this one the fifth gear one has dogs either side of it but also a space for forks we need to basically make one of these flip it over and in here sorry in here so that we have a gear actually it won't be flipping over sorry um, I don't think so anyway I think the gear this if I can move this these teeth here become invisible when they're engaged with third and these teeth here are these dogs and this uh, ring here are made invisible they're hidden in uh, second gear so what's visible at all times is the track for the fork to go into which we need to keep because the fork needs to be able to move this um, to select second and third and but the thing is always locked to the output shaft so we don't have to lock anything here this is where we do the locking i need teeth I need to make this again which makes it wider so that I have a gear almost the width of this actually it should be thicker than that it should be as wide as fifth really in here 
so we may end up having to make longer teeth here but basically this ring here needs to be made wider with teeth on it so that when we're in this position here and this is in this position or idling but then you want to engage sixth that doesn't move but this goes click like that to lock the imagine the sixth gear here onto the input shaft via third gear and it will turn sixth gear output which will be here and that will turn the output shaft so power will come along the input up to third into sixth input cross into sixth output and then down into the output shaft and out and that's how the sixth gear is going to work um, the challenge is fitting it in here is no problem just get this remade with dogs on it and a six gear here with uh, a few windows in it or actually it's probably going to have dogs because it's going to be uh, we might fit windows in it it's, it's going to be a larger gear than fifth it'll be larger here and it'll be smaller than fifth here so it'll be the smallest gear on the output shaft and it'll be the uh, largest gear on the input shaft so what I might have to do is I might need to get all these gears remade and shorten them all by a millimeter or something each and then that millimeter will build up into say, one two three four say about five extra millimeters here and I might be able to shave off a mill or two here so I might have an extra say six millimeters across the whole thing and keep the gears fitting into that space and fit in the sixth gear here um, that's pretty much how it's going to go down so now what I'll do is I'll put this back into the engine and just see how much space I have at the end for moving everything that way a little bit.